Harshita as Mrs. Boyle, Surya Prakash Lotia as Mr. Christopher Wren, Rona Khanna as Ms. Caswell, Shobhit Vivan as Major Metcalf. Yes, sir. Samik Sani as the crazy Paravicini and Rishita Sharma as Sergeant Trotter. So, without further delay, we begin today's show with Agatha Christie's murder mystery directed by Neha Bakshi Kaushal and Siddharth Kaushal. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting before you the mouse trap. My God, what's that? You went that way. And according to Scotland Yard, the crime took place at 24 Culver Street, Paddington. The murdered woman was a Mrs. Maureen Leon. In connection with the murder, the police are anxious to interview a man seen in the vicinity. Wearing a dark overcoat, light scarf and a soft felt hat. Mrs. Hudson! Mrs. Hudson! It's cold. That really does look nice. Oh, how stupid of Giles. He's left out the S in Monkwell. Gosh! You brute! There you are. Molly, leave it all to me. Shall I stoke the aga? Done. Oh, hello, sweetheart. Your nose is cold. I've just come in. Why, where have you been? I had to go down to the village to get some stuff I'd forgotten. Did you get the chicken netting? Uh, darling, it, it wasn't the right kind. Mm hmm. Hmm? But it wasn't any good either. Huh, I knew it. <coughs> Is everything ready? 
Nobody has arrived uh, yet, I suppose. No, thank goodness. Everything's in order. Mrs. Hudson's left early. Afraid of the weather, I suppose. Lord, what a nuisance these maids are. That leaves everything on your shoulders, sweetheart. And yours, this is a partnership. As long as you don't ask me to cook. No, 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 that's my department. Anyway, we've got lots of tins in case we are snowed up. But, Giles, do you think it's going to be all right? <laughs> got cold feet, have you? Are you sorry now that we did not sell this place when your aunt left it to you? Instead of having this mad idea of running it as a guest house. No, I'm not. I love it. And talking of a guest house, just look at that. Pretty good. What? You've left out the S. It's a disaster. It's Monkwell instead of Monkswell. You're in disgrace. Go and stoke up the central heating. Cross that icy yard. Shall I bank the for the night now? No. That's not to be done until 10 or 11 at night. How appalling. Hurry up. Someone may arrive at any moment now. Your Padozi room's worked out, right? Yes. Mrs. Boyle, front four poster room. Major Metcalf, blue room. Mr. Wren. Mr. Wren, Oak Room, and Miss Casewell, East Room. Now I do wonder what all these people will be like. We should have taken rent in advance, Molly. I don't think so. We are rather new at this game. Well, they bring their luggage, and if they don't pay, we hang on to their luggage. It's quite simple. I can't help thinking we ought to have taken a correspondence course in hotel keeping. Somebody is going to make a fool of us. Their luggage might be just bricks wrapped up in newspaper. And where should we be then, huh? But they all wrote from very good addresses. Well, that's what servants. I don't care what they are, so long as they pay us seven guineas every week. You are such a wonderful woman of business, Molly. Child. <coughs> and according to Scotland Yard, the crime took place at 24 Culver Street, Paddington, London. The murdered woman was a Mrs. Maureen Leon. In connection with the murder, the police are anxious to interview a man seen in the area wearing a dark overcoat, a light scarf, and a soft felt hat. Motorists are warned against the icebound roads. Oh, Giles! The heavy snow. How do you do? Da da! Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. Weather is simply awful. My taxi gave up at your gate. Would not attend the drive. No sporting instinct. Oh, are you Mrs. Ralston? Yes. Oh, how delightful. My name is Ren. How do you do, Mr. Wren? You know, you're not at all as I pictured you. I've been thinking of you as a retired general's widow. <laughs> Indian Army. I thought you'd be terrifically grim and maim sahibish and that the whole place would be simply grand with Banaras brass. <laughs> Instead, it's heavenly, quite heavenly. 
lovely proportions. Ah, huh? <laughs> that's a fake. This table looks genuine. I'm simply going to love this place. Have you got any wax flowers or birds of paradise? I'm afraid not. What a pity. Well, what about a cabinet? Can't you? Purple, plummy, mahogany cabinet with great solid carved fruits on it. Yes, we have. In the dining room. Uh -huh, I can see that. Very well, absolutely perfect. Real bedrock respectability, huh? Oh, but why do away with a centre mahogany table? I mean, little tables just spoil the effect, <coughs> Molly. We thought that guests would prefer them. You know, guests like them so much. I see. Yes, I told you. Oh, this is my husband. Charmed. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> How do you do? Terrible, terrible weather, isn't it? Takes one back to Dickens and Scrooge and that irritating tiny... Tim! <laughs> so bogus. I'll take your suitcase upstairs for you, right? What room did you say, sweetheart? Yes. I do hope it's got a four-poster with little chills roses. Well, Christopher, you must get on with the things here. <laughs> yes. Take it off. But I do so like knowing all about people. I mean, people are so madly interesting. Don't you think so? Well, I suppose some are and some are not. No, I don't agree. I think they are all very interesting. Because you never really know what anyone is like or what they are really thinking. For instance, you don't know what I'm thinking about now. Not in the least. Uh, uh, Mr. Wren, would you like to have a cigarette? No thanks. You see, the only people who really know what other people are like are artists and they don't really know why they know it but if they are portrait painters mm -hmm. it comes out on the canvas are you a painter no i'm an architect my parents you see baptized me christopher in the hope that i would be an architect christopher <laughs> I'll be liking her. I find your wife most sympathetic. Indeed. And really very beautiful. Oh, don't be absurd. There, there, there. Isn't that like an English woman? Compliments always embarrass them. European women take compliments as a matter of course, but English women have all the feminine spirit crushed out of them by their English husbands. I don't know, there's something very boorish about English husbands. <laughs> uh, come up and see your room, Mr. Wren. Uh, shall I? Uh, right. This way, Mr. Wren. Whoopsie! Ah. Could you stoke up the hot water boiler? Uh. Christopher Wren, please move on. Uh, yes. I presume? Yes. I am Mrs. Boyle. I am Giles Ralston, Mrs. Boyle. Come into the fire and warm yourself. Hmm. Awful weather, isn't it? Is this your only luggage? A major Metcalf, is it? He seemed to it. I'll leave the door for him. The taxi wouldn't risk coming up the drive. It stopped at the gate. We had to share a taxi from the station and there was great difficulty in getting back. Nothing ordered to meet us, it seems. Uh, look, I'm so sorry, Mrs. Boyle. Actually, we did not know by what train you would be coming by, you see. 
Otherwise, of course, you would have seen that somebody was uh, uh, standing by for you. <laughs> All the trains should have been met. Let me take your gloves, Mrs. Boyle. My wife will be here in a minute. I'll just go along and give Major Metcalf a hand with the bags. Hmm. The drive might at least have been cleared of snow. Most offhand and casual, I must say. I'm so sorry, I... Mrs. Ralston. Yes, I... You are very young. Young? To be running an establishment of this kind. You can't have had much experience. Well, you see, there has to be a beginning for everything, hasn't there? I see. Quite inexperienced. An old house. I hope we haven't got any termites. Certainly not. A lot of people don't know they have got termites until it's too late to do anything about it. The house is in perfect condition. Hmm. It could do with a coat of paint, you know. You've got a worm in this oak. Really, Miss Spoil? Oh, look who's here. This way, Major. How do you do? Absolute pleasure outside, isn't it? At first, I thought we shouldn't make it. Oh, I beg your pardon. If it goes on like this, I should say you will have five to six days of snow by morning. Yes, Giles, continue with Major Metcalf here for a second. No, 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 no. I put Mr. Wren in the rose room. He liked the four posters so much. So now it's Mrs. Boyle in the oak room and Major Metcalf in blue room. Major! So this way. Oh. You must be having a lot of servant difficulty here. We have quite a good local woman who comes in from the village. And what indoor staff? Uh, 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 no indoor staff, just us. Indeed, I understood this was a guest house in full running order. Well, you see, Mrs. Boy, we're only just starting. I would have said that a proper staff of servants was essential before opening this kind of establishment. I consider your advertisement most misleading. May I know if I'm the only guest here with Major Metcalf? That is... Oh no, there are several here. This weather too, a blizzard. No less and all very unfortunate. Well, we couldn't very well foresee. The weather, Mrs. Then Boyle. Then what wind doth blow, Goodness. and it will bring snow. And what will the robin do then? <laughs> I adore that we rise, don't you? Plan all this so tragic and deadly. That is why children like you. May I introduce Mr. Wren, Mrs. Boyle. How do you do? This is a very beautiful house. Don't you think so? I have come to the time of life where the amenities of an establishment are more important than its appearance. If I had not believed this was a running concern, I should have never come here. I understand it was fully equipped with every home comfort. Look, Mrs. Boyle, there is no obligation for you to remain here if you are not satisfied. No, indeed, I should not think of doing so. If there has been any misapprehension, it would perhaps be better if you went elsewhere. I could ring up the taxi to return. The roads are not yet locked. locked. We have had so many applications for the room that we could fill your space quite easily. Yes, Giles. In any case, we are raising our terms next month. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am certainly not going to leave before I have tried what the place is like. You needn't think you can turn me out now. 
Perhaps you will take me up to my bedroom, Mrs. Ralston. Certainly, Mrs. Boyle. <sighs> Darling, you were wonderful. <laughs> About half a mile down the road, ran into a drift. Oh, let me take this. Any more stuff in your car? No, I travel light. Glad to see it's warm in here. Mr. Wren, Miss uh, Casewell. Casewell. My wife will be here in a minute, Miss Casewell. No hurry. I've got to get myself thawed out. Looks as though you're going to be snowed up here. Weather forecast says heavy rains expected, motor rest worn, etc. Hope you've got plenty of provisions in. Oh, yes. Yes, you see, Miss Casewell, you know, my wife is an excellent manager. In any case, we can always eat our hands, can't we? Before we start eating each other. Paper apart from the weather. Usual political crisis. Oh, yes, and a rather juicy murder. A murder? Oh, I like murder. They seem to think it was a homicidal maniac. Strangled a woman somewhere near Paddington. Maniac, I suppose. Doesn't say much, does it? The police are anxious to interview someone. Of Culver Street at that time. Medium height, wearing a darkish overcoat, a lined scarf, and a soft felt hat. The police messages to this effect have been broadcast throughout the day. <coughs> Useful description. Fits pretty well. Anyone, won't it? When it says that the police are anxious to interview someone. That's a polite way of hinting that he is the murderer. Could be. Who was the woman who was murdered? Mrs. Leon. Maureen Leon. Young or old? It doesn't say. It doesn't seem to have been robbery. I told you, maniac. I must hurry on and get on with the dinner. Major Metcalf's really nice. He won't be that difficult. It's that Mrs. Boyle that really frightens me. She's just so pathetic. She whines about everything. She causes so much trouble. Sometimes I just wish I could kill her! Molly, huh? calm down. Huh? As I was saying, I must get on with the dinner. 
we must have a good dinner. I was thinking of opening two tins, a tin of minced beef and cereal, and there's stewed figs and custard too. Do you think that will be all right? Oh, I should think so. Not, not very original, perhaps. Well, that's what I seem to see. Christopher Wren is Do not let right. me help. I adore cooking. Why not an omelette? You've got eggs, haven't you? Oh, yes. We've got plenty of eggs. We've got lots of fowls too. They don't lay as well as they should, but we put down a lot of eggs. And if you've got a bottle of cheap, any type wine, you could add it to the minced beef and cereals, did you say? To give it a continental flavor, show me where the kitchen is and what all have you got. And I shall dare say, I shall have an inspiration. Come on, Mr. Wren. This way. Bye, bye. Isn't he sweet? He's put on an apron and he's getting on with the things. He says, leave it all to him and don't come back for half an hour. If our guests want to do all the cooking, it will save us a lot of trouble. Why on earth did you give him the best room? I told you he liked the four poster. He liked the four poster. Giles! I've got no use for that guy. You didn't handle his soupies. I did. Had it got bricks in it? <coughs> it had no weight at all. If you ask me, there was nothing inside. Nothing? He's probably one of those young men who go around murdering hotel keepers. I don't believe it. I like him. But don't you think Miss Casewell is rather peculiar? Terrible female. If, if she really is a female. It, it seems very hard that all of our guests should either be unpleasant or odd. Anyway, Major Metcalf's all right. Probably drinks. Do you think so? Oh, no, I don't. I was just rather feeling depressed, you know. Well, at any case, we know the worst now. That they have all arrived. <gasps> Who can that be? You can 
Let me have a room. Yes. <coughs> yes, I'm yes. afraid it's a rather small one. Naturally, naturally. You have other guests. Well, you see, we're only starting this place as a guest house today. And we're rather new at it. Charming, charming. But uh, uh, what about your luggage, sir? That is of no consequence. I have locked the car securely. But won't it be better to, to, to get a tent? No, no. I can assure you, on such a night as this, there are going to be no thieves abroad. And for me, my wants are very simple. I have all I need. Here, in this little bag. Yes, that's all I need. You would better get thoroughly warm. I'll see about your room. It will be cold because it's in the north, but all the others are occupied. You have several guests then. <laughs> oh, yes, we have Mrs. Boyle, Major Metcalf, Miss Casewell, a young man called Christopher Wren, and now you. Yes, the unexpected guest. You do not invite <laughs> the guest who just arrived from nowhere. Out of the storm. It sounds quite dramatic, does it not? Who am I? <coughs> you do not know. Where do I come from? You do not know. Me, I am the man of mystery. <laughs> but now I tell you this I complete the picture, and there are going to be no more arrivals and no departure either. From tomorrow, perhaps even already, we are cut off from the civilization. No butcher, no baker, no milkman, no postman, no daily paper, nobody and nothing but ourselves. It's admirable. Admirable. It cannot suit me better. My name, by the way, is Para Virgini. <laughs> oh, yes, ours is Ralston. Mr. and Mrs. Ralston. You said Monkswell Manor Guest House is. Good. <laughs> Monksville Manor Guest House. Perfect. Perfect. I'm really worried now, Giles. Mr. Giles! My suitcase. How can he? Molly? Even I am worried now. Coming, Mr. Paravachi. <coughs> oh, God, who are all these people? I couldn't sleep all night. It was bitter cold. And I consider it most dishonest of them not to have told me they were just starting this place. Well, everything's got a beginning, ma'am. You know, excellent breakfast this morning. Good coffee, scrambled eggs, mm -hmm. homemade jam, mm -hmm. and all that. Nicely served too. 
Molly does it all by herself. <laughs> Amateurs. There should be a proper staff. Excellent lunch too, ma'am. Corn beef. But very well disguised corn beef. They ate mine in it. Mrs. Ralston promised to make a pie for us tonight. Um, uh, these radiators are not really hot. I shall speak about it. Very comfortable beds too. At least mine was. Hope yours was too. It was quite okay. I don't see why the best bedroom should have been given to that very peculiar young man. Got here ahead of us. First come, first served. <laughs> From the advertisement, I got quite a different impression of what this place would be like. A comfortable writing room and a much larger place altogether with a bridge and other amenities. Typical British delight. I beg your pardon. <coughs> I mean, yes, I quite see. <coughs> Major. What you mean? <coughs> no, indeed. I shan't stay here long. No, no. I don't suppose you will. Right? Oh. oh my child! Really, that is a very peculiar young man. Unbalanced mentally, I shouldn't wonder. Think he's escaped from a lunatic asylum? I shouldn't be at all surprised. <coughs> Giles? Can you shovel the snow away again from the back door? Let me give you a hand. Good exercise. Must have exercise. Yes, Major. Thank you. Oh, oh, sorry, Miss Casewell. That's all right, Molly. Really? What an incredible young woman. Doesn't she know anything about housework? Carrying a carpet sweeper through the front hall? Aren't there any back stairs? Oh yes, nice back stairs. Very convenient if there was a fire. My stuff. Oh, my God. Are you going to have that on quite so loud? Yes, yes I am. All right, then I am leaving. Please, leave. One can't even write letters in this place. <laughs> Wretched old hag. Oh. <coughs> Hello? Wherever I go, that old Mrs. Boyle seems to hunt me down. And then she glares at me. Positively glares. Turn it down a bit. Is that all right? Oh, yes. It served its purpose. What purpose? Tactics, boy. Tactics. Oh, you mean her? She'd pinch the best chair. I've got it now. You drove her out? I'm glad. I'm very glad. I don't like her a bit. I think we should think of things we shall do now in her. Shall we? I wish she'd go away from here. In this blizzard? Not a hope. But when the snow melts? Oh, when the snow melts. Lots of things may have happened. Yes, yes, that's true. Snow's rather lovely, isn't it? So peaceful and pure. It makes one forget things. It doesn't make me forget how fierce you sound. I was thinking. What sort of thinking? Ice, 
on a bedroom jug. Jill Blaine's raw and bleeding. One thin, ragged blanket and a child shivering with cold and fear. My dear, you sound too grim. What is it? A novel? You didn't know I was a writer, did you? Who are you? Sorry to disappoint you. Actually, I'm not. I sometimes don't understand Miss Casewell. Yes? Yes, this is Monksville Manor Guest House. What? No, I'm afraid Mr. Ralston cannot come to the telephone just now. This is Mrs. Ralston speaking. Who? The Berkshire Police? Oh, yes, yes, Superintendent Hogan. But I'm afraid you can't get here. Nothing can get through. We snowed up, completely snowed up. Yes, very well. But what? Hello? 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 Wally, do you know where the other stuff is for God's sake? Giles, the police have just rung up. Trouble with the police, huh? Serving liquor without a license. Are you now? They said they're sending out sergeant or inspector or something. But I don't think. But, but he'll never get here, right? That's what I said. But he seemed quite confident that he would. He seemed quite confident that he would get here. Nonsense! Even a jeep couldn't get through in this, right? Anyways, what is it all about? That's what I asked, but he wouldn't say. Just said I was to impress upon my husband to listen very carefully to what Sergeant Trotter, I think it was, and follow his instructions implicitly. Don't you think it's a little extraordinary? <coughs> what on earth do you think we have done? We must have done something. I did remember to get the wireless license, right? Yes, it's in the kitchen dresser. I rather had an accident with the car the other day, but only I tell you it was entirely the other fellow's fault. We must have done something. Only something to do with running this place. I guess we have ignored some tenfold regulation of some ministry or the, or the other. You practically can't avoid it nowadays. Oh dear, I wish we had never started this place. We're going to be snowed up. <coughs> Everybody's going to be stuck in this place. We're going to be stranded. Everybody's going to be cross. And we're going to go through our reserve of tins. Cheer up, darling. Everything's going on right at the moment. I filled up the coal and brought in the wood. I've stoked the boiler and I but still, might chop some kindling next. But still, what are we to do? You know, Ollie, just, just comes to think of it. Must be something pretty serious to send a police sergeant tracking out in this. It must be something really urgent. <laughs> Mr. Ralston, do you know the central heating in the library is practically stone cold? I'm paying seven guineas a week here. Seven guineas and I do not want to freeze to death. I said I'll go and stoke it up, Mrs. Boyle. You get it? Giles. <gasps> Giles. Get it? Your husband is so disrespectful. <coughs> you, Mrs. Ralston. Yes, you have a very extraordinary man staying here. Giles. Mr. Wren. His manners and his ties and does even brush his hair. 
He's an extremely brilliant young architect. I beg your pardon? Christopher Wren is an architect. My dear young woman, I have naturally heard of Sir Christopher Wren. Of course he was an architect. He built St. Paul's. You young people seem to think that no one is educated but yourselves. I meant this Wren. His name is Christopher. His parents called him so because they wanted him to be an architect. And he nearly is. So it turned out all right. <laughs> Sounds a fishy story to me. I should make some inquiries about him if I were you. What do you know of him? Just as much as I know of you, Mrs. Boyle, which is that both of you are paying us seven guineas a week to stay here. It doesn't matter to me whether I like my guests or whether I don't. You are young and inexperienced and should welcome some advice from someone who is more knowledgeable than yourself. And what about this foreigner? What about him? You weren't expecting him, were you? To turn away a bona fide traveller is against the law, Mrs. Boyle. You should know that. You should know that, Mrs. Spoil, and I don't think that you should warrant you a magistrate sitting on the bench, Mrs. Spoil. I do you say that? Well, I just wanted to say about it. Is this, this Mr. Faravaccini or whatever he calls himself to be? He All I say thing. is that this Faravaccini seems to me such a. Beware, dear lady. You talk of the devil and the heresy. <laughs> I didn't hear you come in. I came on a tiptoe like this. Nobody ever hears me if I do not want them to. Indeed. I find it very amusing. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> now there was a young lady. I shall get on with my letters. I'll see if it's a little warmer in the drawing room. <laughs> my charming hostess looks upset. What is it, dear lady? Everything's rather difficult this morning because of the snow. Yes, snow makes things difficult, does it not? Or else it makes them easy. Very easy. I don't know what you mean. No, no, there is quite a lot you do not know. I think for one thing that you do not know much about running a guest house. I dare say we don't. But we mean to make a go of it. Bravo, bravo. <laughs> I'm not such a very bad cook. You are without doubt an enchanting cook. May I give you a little word? A warning, Mrs. Ralston. You and your husband may not be too trusting, you know. Do you have any references from your other guests? Is that usual? I always thought people just, just came. It is advisable to know about people who <coughs> sleep under your roof. Take, for example, myself. I turn up saying that my car overturned in a snowdrift. You did. What do you know of me? Nothing. Nothing at all. I can be a thief. A thief. A robber. A robber? A fugitive from justice. Oh, justice. A madman. A madman. And even a murderer. Oh, <laughs> Mrs. Ralston, the drawing room is far too cold to sit in. I shall write my letters in here. Allow me to poke fire for you, dear lady. I should get on with my work. Everything's rather late with these Excuse me, Mrs. Ralston. Is your husband about? Uh, Giles is not here. I'm afraid the pipes of the downstairs cloakroom are frozen. <laughs> oh dear, what an awful day. First the police and now the pipes. Police? Police, did you say? They just rang up now to say they're sending out a sergeant out here. But I don't think he'll ever get here. Ruddy calls more than half stones and the... Is everything okay in here? No. <laughs>
I heard the police are on the way here. What's the matter? That's all right, sir. You see, no one can get here today. Why, you may ask, the drifts are five feet deep and the roads are all banged up. No one will get here today. <laughs> Can that be? <coughs> Are you Mr. Ralston? Yes. Thank you, sir. Detective Sergeant Trotter, Berkshire Police. Please. Can I get these keys off and store them somewhere? Uh, uh, go around that way, Sergeant. I'll meet you there. Thank you, sir. Yes, please go on. Skeets! I suppose that is what we pay our police force for nowadays. To go around enjoying themselves at winter sports. Why did you send for police? <gasps> Mrs. Ralston? I did not. <sighs> Who's that man? Where did he come from? He passed the drawing room window on skis. All over snow. And looking terribly strong. You may believe it or not, but that man is a policeman. A policeman skiing. Oh. This is Detective Sergeant Trotter. Good afternoon. You can't be a sergeant. You are too young. I'm not quite as young as I look, man. <laughs> but terribly strong. Uh, we'll stay up here under these stairs, sir. Right. Excuse me, Mrs. Ralston. Yes. But may I use your telephone? Of course, Major Metcalf. He's very strong, don't you think so? Major Metcalf? Up. Uh, no, no. Sergeant Trotter. I always think that policemen are very strong. <laughs> oh, I think you must do. Is uh, everything all right? The phone is no working, Major? No brains, Mr. Wren. That policeman, he's young. <laughs> Hello? You can see that at a glance. Hello? Mr. Ralston, this telephone is dead. Dead? Quite dead. <laughs> it was all right about half an hour ago. Hello? Hello? The line's gone with the weight of the snow, I suppose. Hello? Hello? So we are quite cut off now. Quite cut off. I don't see anything to laugh at. No, indeed. Uh -huh. But it's a private joke of my own. Hist! The policeman is returning. Right. Now we can get to... Mrs. Ralston, do you want to see us alone, Sergeant? If so, we can uh, move it to the library. Well, no, sir, that won't be necessary. It'll save time and everybody. Now, if I may sit here. <coughs> I beg your pardon. Thanks. Oh, do hurry up and tell us what have we done. Done? Oh, it's nothing of that kind, Mrs. Ralston. Quite different. It's more a matter of police protection, if you understand me. Police protection? It relates to the death of Mrs. Leon. <gasps> Mrs. Maureen Leon of 24 Culver Street, London, West 2. She was murdered yesterday, the 15th instant. You may have heard or read about the case. Yes, I heard it on the radio. She was strangled. That's right, madam. Now, sir, I would like to know if you were acquainted with this Mrs. Leon. No, Sergeant, I've, I've never heard of her. She had a police record and her fingerprints were on the file. So we could identify her without difficulty. Her husband was a farmer, John Leon, and they resided at the Long Ridge Farm, not very far. Long Ridge Farm? Wasn't that where those children were? Yes, the Long Ridge Farm. 
three children. That's right, Miss.
this is Leon. Yes. And that he's a homicidal maniac and he'll try to turn up here, try to kill someone. But why? That is what I've got to find out from you. As the superintendent sees it, there has got to be some connection. Now, you say to some that you yourself have never had any connection with the Longridge farm. And the same goes for you, madam. I... no. I mean, no connection. What about servants? We haven't got any servants. That reminds me, Sergeant Rotter. Would you mind if I went to the kitchen? I'll be there if you want me. That's quite all right, Mrs. Uh, yes, I would like all your needs. This is quite ridiculous. We are merely staying in a kind of hotel. <laughs> and we only arrived just yesterday. We have nothing to do with this place. But you had planned to come here beforehand. I mean, the rooms were booked in advance. Well, yes, all except Mr. Para. Para Vachini. My, my car overturned in a snowdrift. Right. But what I am getting at is that anyone who has been following you around may very well know that you are here. Now I want to know one thing and I want it quick. Which one of you is it that has some connection with the Longridge Farm King? Look, I am trying to help you out and you are not being very sensible. One of you is in danger. Deadly danger. Genie. But my dear inspector, I know nothing but nothing what you have been talking about. I am a stranger in this country. I know nothing of these local affairs of bygone years. And you ma'am? <coughs> well, I don't really, I consider it an impertinence. Why on earth should I have anything to do with such distressing business? Casewell, Leslie Casewell. I never heard of Longridge Farm and I know nothing about it. And you, sir? <clears throat> Metcalf, Major. Read about the case in the papers at the time. I was stationed in Edinburgh then. No personal knowledge. Christopher Wren. I was a mere child at that time. I, I don't remember even hearing about it. And that's all you have to say. Any one of you. Well, if one of you gets murdered here, you'll have yourselves to pay. Now then. My dears, how melodramatic. He's very strong, isn't he? I do admire the police. So stern and hard boiled. Quite a thrill, this whole business. Three blind mice. How does the tune go? Really, Mr. Red? Oh. <coughs> but don't you like it? But it's a signature tune. <laughs> the signature of the murderer. Just fancy what a kick he must be getting out of it. Melodramatic rubbish. I don't believe a word of it. 
But just wait, Mrs. Boyle, till I creep up behind you and you feel my hands on your throat. Stop! Stop! That'll do, Christopher. It's a poor joke. <laughs> anyway, in fact, it's not a joke at all. Oh. <laughs> but, but it is. That's just what it is. That's what makes it so deliciously deadly. If you could just see your faces. A singularly ill-mannered and neurotic young man. Where's Giles? Taking a policeman on a conductor tour of the house. What? Mrs. Ralston, your friend, the architect, has been behaving in a most abnormal manner. <coughs> Young fellow seeing nervy nowadays, they say he'll grow out of it. Nerves. I've no patience with people who say they have nerves. I haven't any nerves. No. Perhaps that's just as well for you, Mrs. Boyle. What do you mean? I think you were one of the magistrates on the bench at the time. In fact, you were responsible for sending those three little children to Long Ridge Farm. Really, Major Metcalf, I can hardly be held responsible. We had reports from the welfare workers. The farm people seemed very nice and were most anxious to have the children. It seemed most satisfactory. Eggs and fresh milk and a healthy outdoors life. Kicks, blows, starvation, and a thoroughly cruel couple. But how was I to know? Yes, I was right. It was you. One tries to do a public duty, and all one gets is abuse. <laughs> <laughs> you must forgive me. Perhaps, indeed, I find it. Most amusing. I enjoy myself greatly. <laughs> I never did like that man. Where did he come from last night? I don't know. Looks a bit of a spiff to me. Makes his face up to rouge and powder. Disgusting. And yet he skips about as though he were quite young. You will be wanting more wood. Yes. I'll get it. It's almost dark, and yet it's only four in the afternoon. I must switch on the lights. <coughs> That's better. Now, where did I leave my pen? How would I where know, is Mrs. My pen? Boyle? How would I know your pen, Mrs. Boyle? <laughs> what a horrid little tune that is. Don't you like it? Reminds you of your childhood, perhaps? An unhappy childhood? I was very happy as a child. You were lucky. Weren't you happy? No. I'm sorry. But all that's a long time ago. One gets over things. I suppose so. Or doesn't one? Damned hard to say. They say what happens as a child matters more than anything else. They say, they say, who saves? Psychologists. All humbug. Just a damned lot of nonsense. I have no use for psychologists and psychiatrists. I've never really had much to do with them. A good thing for you, you haven't. It's all a lot of nonsense, the whole thing. Life is what you make of it. Go straight ahead. Don't look back. But one can't always help looking back. Nonsense. It's a question of willpower. Perhaps. I know. I expect you're right. But sometimes <coughs> things happen to make you remember. Don't give in. Turn your back on them. Is that really the right way? I wonder. Perhaps we ought to really face them. Depends what you're talking about. Uh -huh. Sometimes I have.
hardly know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Nothing from the past is going to affect me, except in the way I want to do. But you can't telephone. The what? line's dead. Since when? Major Metcalf tried it just after you arrived. It was all right earlier. Oh, yes, I suppose. The lines are down with the snow and blizzard. I wonder if it may have been gutted. Cut. Huh? But even if this, this maniac is trying to get here and try to kill all of us or one of us, he can't get here. Be safe now. No one can get here till the snow melts. Unless he is here already. Already? Oh, here already? Why not? All of these people arrived here yesterday evening, a few hours after the murder. Plenty of time to get to. But, but they're all booked beforehand. Except for Paravachini. Why not? He's crying for plans. Crime? There only has been one crime in Kalua Street, right? Why are you so sure? Another one is going to be in here. That it will happen. No, I hope to prevent that. That it will be attempted. Yes. I can't believe it. It sounds like fiction. It's not fiction, Mr. Rawlinson. It is just that. You've got a description of what this man looks like in London. Believe it. You keep this telephone wire that worries me if it's been cut. I must get on to the kitchen. Molly, you dropped some. Thank you. This window open can't even keep the windows closed. <coughs> oh, I finally get something a radio. To understand what I may term as the mechanics of fear, you have to be studying the precise effect 
produced by fear on the human mind. Imagine, for instance, that you're alone in a room. It is late in the afternoon. A door opens softly behind you. What is happening? Who, who turned out the lights? Oh, oh. What is it? Oh. No, no, please don't give it up! Lights are off. Mrs. Boyle? Mrs. Boyle? Mrs. Boyle? Mrs. Boyle? Mrs. Boyle? there should be two people brought here by chance, both of them with a share in the Long Ridge Farm case. Under certain circumstances, it would not be such a coincidence. Think it out, Miss Casebell. Now, I would like to get down quite clearly of where everyone was when Mrs. Boyle got killed. <coughs> I have your statement, Mrs. Ralston. You were in the kitchen 
kitchen preparing vegetables. You came out the kitchen along the passage, through the swing door, into the hall, and in here. The radio was blaring, but the lights were switched off, and the hall was dark. You switched the lights on, saw Mrs. Boyd, and screamed. Yes, I screamed and screamed, and at last, people came. Yes. A lot of people came in different directions, all arriving more or less at once. Now then, Mr. Ralston, when I went out that window to print the telephone wire, you went up to the room, you and Mrs. Ralston occupied, to try the extension telephone. Where were you? I'd been in the kitchen, seeing if there was anything I could do to help Mrs. Ralston. I loved cooking. After that, I went upstairs to my bedroom. Why? It's quite a natural thing to go to one's bedroom. Don't you think? <laughs> I mean, one wants to be alone sometimes. You went up to your room because you wanted to be alone. And I wanted to brush my hair and tidy up. And you wanted to brush your hair. Anyway, that's where I was. And you heard Mrs. Ralston scream? Yes. And you came down? Yes. You know, I'm very curious as to why you and Mr. Ralston I, I came down by the back stairs. They are nearer to my room. And did you go up by the back stairs? Or did you come through here? Yes. I went upstairs by the back stairs too. I see. Mr. Paravicini, I had told you that I was playing piano through their inspector. Somebody heard you playing the piano? I do not expect so. I was playing very, very softly with one finger, so. And nobody heard you. What were you playing on the piano? I was playing the tune of Three Blind Mice. Is that so? Yes. And it runs in people's head. Someone was whistling it too. Whistling it? Where? I am not sure. Perhaps in the front hall. Perhaps upstairs. And perhaps even in a bedroom. Who was whistling three blind mice? <laughs> was it you, Mr. Ralston? Was it you, Major Metcalf? Was it you, Miss Casewell? Was it you, Miss Casewell? No, it wasn't. Well, are you making this up, Mr. Paravacini? No, no, Inspector. <clears throat> I beg your pardon. Sergeant, I would not do a thing like that. Well, go on. 
I was playing the piano. I was playing piano with one finger so. And then I hear radio. Was playing very loud. Someone was shouting on it. It offended my ears. And after that, suddenly, I hear Mrs. Ralston scream. <laughs> I see. Mr. Ralston here was upstairs. Mr. Ren was also upstairs. And Mr. Paravicini was playing the piano. What about you, Miss Casebell? I was writing letters in the library. And could you hear what was going on outside? I didn't hear anything until Mrs. Ralston screamed. And what did you do then? I came in here. At once? I think so. So you say you were writing letters when you heard Mrs. Ralston scream? Yes. And you hurriedly got off the writing desk and came in here? Yes. I brought it with me. Uh -huh. Dearest Jessie, is that friend or relation? That's none of your damned business! Perhaps not. But you know, if I was writing letters and I heard someone screaming, blue murder, I don't think I'd take the time to pick up my unfinished letter, fold it, and put it into my pocket before I came out to see what the matter was. You wouldn't? How interesting! Now then, Major Metka, you say you were in the basement. Why? Looking around. Just looking around. Nice basement you've got. Glad you like it. Not at all. <laughs> Look at aren't we wasting time? There is Mr. Austin. Oh, very well, Mr. Austin! Mr. Austin! Thank you. Now, I have got to establish opportunity, you know, and then It's not true, it's not true. You're all against me. Everyone's always been against me. You are going to frame me for a murder. It's a persecution. That's what it is. A persecution. <laughs> Steady, lad. Steady. Oh, it's all right, Chris. Nobody's against you. Tell him it's all right. We don't frame people. Tell him you're not going to arrest him. I am not arresting anyone. To do that, I need evidence. And I don't have any evidence. Yes. I think you're crazy, Molly, and you too. If only as a safety measure, he ought to be put under arrest. It's only fair to rest of us then. Wait, Giles, wait. Sergeant Trotter, can I speak to you a minute? Certainly. Will everyone else please wait in the dining room? You too, Mr. Wren. Let's go, Christopher. Now. I, I am staying. No, you 
you too, child. I'm staying. I don't know what's come over you. Mom. Please, please, please. So, what is it you want to tell me, Sergeant Trotter? You think that this crazy killer must be the eldest of those three children at the farm? But you don't know that, do you? We don't actually know a thing. Oh, and I know it all seems to point to Christopher, but I don't believe it is Christopher. There must be other possibilities. Such as? Well, hadn't those children any relations at all? The mother was a drunk. She died soon after the children were taken away from her. What about their father? He was an army sergeant. Serving abroad. If still alive, he would be discharged from the army by now. But you don't know where he is now. To trace him will take some time, but I can assure you, Mrs. Ralston, the police take every eventuality into account. But you don't know where he is at the minute. And if the son is mentally unstable, the father may be unstable too. That's possible. If it's her mind, it's possible. But, and if this father, if he came home after being a prisoner of the war and having suffered terribly, if he came home to see his wife dead and that his children had gone through some terrible experience, he might very well go off his head and want revenge. That's only surmise. It's possible. Well, Mrs. Ralston, it is quite possible. So this killer might even be middle-aged or old. Major Metcalf seemed frightfully upset when I said the police had rung up. He really was. I saw his face. Major Metcalf. Middle-aged <coughs> soldier. I know he seems quite nice and perfectly normal, but it mightn't show, might it? No, Mrs. Ralston. Often, it doesn't show at all. So it's not only Christopher who's a suspect. There's Major Metcalf as well. Any other suggestions? <gasps> Mr. Parabaccini does look quite mad to me. Mr. Parabaccini. Yes. You're very anxious, aren't you? That be young, Mr. Well, he's just so unhappy and helpless somehow. Well, let me tell you this, Mrs. Ralston. The police has had every possibility in mind ever since the beginning. The boy, Georgie, the father, and oh, there was one more person. The sister. The sister? Yes, it could have been a woman <gasps> who killed Maureen Leon. Miss Casewell? She's too old for the part. But there is a much wider field. There is yourself, for instance. Me? You're about the right age. But, uh, and then there's your husband, Giles Ralston. Giles, how ridiculous. How much do I know about Giles? Oh, don't be silly. You met him where? At a dance in London. We went in a party. And you have been married how long? Just a year. Met his people? He hasn't any people. They're all dead. They are all dead? Yes, but oh, you make it sound all wrong. His father was a barrister and his mother died when he was a baby. And you are telling me what he told you? Yes, but... And it is none of your own knowledge. It's outrageous that... Mrs. Ralston, you'll be surprised to know just how many cases like yours we get. How long did you know Giles Ralston before you married him? Just three weeks. And you don't know anything else about him? That's not true. I know everything about Giles. I know exactly the sort of person he is, 
he's giles and it's absolutely absurd to suggest that he's some horrible crazy homicidal maniac why he wasn't even in london yesterday when the murder took place wasn't in london yes just a moment Yes. Look what I found. What? It's a scarf that is only sold on the streets of London. Perhaps Giles really was in London. I don't believe it. Don't you? What were you doing in London? Molly. Oh, you startled me. Where is he? Where oh. has the sergeant gone? Oh, he went that way. If only I could get away somehow some way. Is there anywhere I could hide in the house? Hide? Yes, from him. But why? But Molly, they are all so frightfully against me. they are going to say i committed these murders particularly your husband calm down christopher calm down my name is entirely christopher ren and i'm not truly really training to be an architect then then why did you tell me we need it to go into that I ran away whilst I was doing my army service. It was all so beastly. I hated it. <laughs> yes, I'm just like the unknown murderer. But I know you're not the murderer, Chris. I trust you. For the first time in life, someone has shown some faith in me. But. But Sergeant Trotter thinks I'm guilty. No, he doesn't. At least I don't think he does. I hate him. I, I hate him. I hate him. Oh, Sergeant Trotter. He can make you think things that aren't true, that can't possibly be true. What is all this? You see this? Yes. What is it? A London scarf, but but Giles didn't go to London yesterday. Giles didn't go to London. Well, if he was here all day, but he wasn't. Well, that's all right. Probably he did go to London after London after all. No, he didn't. No, he did not go to London. The Sergeant Trotter. He can make you think things that aren't true, that can't possibly be true. That's what happens in a nightmare. You can't trust anybody. Perhaps everybody's a stranger. I seem to be interrupting something between you, right? No, we were just talking. I must go to the kitchen. I'll. I'll come and give you a hand. No, you won't, Giles. You keep away from the kitchen and stay away from my wife, friend. But really, look here. Stay away from my wife, friend. Please, Giles. It's not going to be your next victim. So that's what you think about me? I've said said it before, haven't I? There's a killer loose in this house, and it seems to me that you fit the bill. I'm not the only one to fit the bill, Giles. I don't see who else does it, Ren. How blind you are! Or do you just pretend to be blind? <laughs> Look, Ren, I'm I'm really uh, worried about Molly's safety. So am I. I'm not going to leave you here alone with her. What the hell? Please go, Chris. 
I'm please. not going, Molly. Please go, Christopher. I mean it. I shan't be far away. Yes. Molly, you must be crazy. Perfectly prepared to shut yourself up in the kitchen with a homicidal maniac. He isn't. Only got to look at him once. You see, he's crazy. He isn't. I tell you, Giles, he's just unhappy. I would know if he was dangerous. And anyway, I can look after myself. That's what <coughs> Boyle said. Oh. And she's dead now. Oh, Giles, don't. Look at, look at me, Molly. What's going on between you and that Christopher Wren? What do you mean by between us? Perhaps um, you have met him before. Perhaps you suggested him to come here. And that will pretend meeting for the first time. Giles, have you gone out of your mind? What are you saying? You're being absolutely ridiculous. Rather odd, isn't it? You should come and stay at an out of a way place like this. No order than Miss <coughs> Casewell, Major Metcalf, or even Miss Casewell should. I once read in this paper that these homicidal cases are able to attract women. I knew it was true. Giles, you be absolutely ridiculous. I never set eyes on Christopher Wren until he arrived yesterday. Perhaps your are running up to London to meet him on the sly, right? You know perfectly well I haven't been up to London for weeks. <laughs> you haven't been up to London for weeks? No. Is that so? What? It's quite true. Is it? Then what's this? This is a club of yours you were wearing yesterday. You dropped it. I picked it up this afternoon while talking to Sergeant Trotter. But that... Look what's inside of it. Oh, that, Giles. Sir, London was ticket. So it looks that you didn't go to London after all. All right, I went to London. So did you. What? So did you. You brought back a London scarf. Where did you get hold of that? It was in your overcoat pocket. Anybody could have put it in there. Did they? No. You were in London. All right, yes. I was in I didn't go to meet a woman there. Didn't you? Are you sure you didn't? What do you mean? Go away. What's the matter, Don't touch me, go away! Look, Molly, for the last time. Did you go to London to meet Christopher yesterday? Oh, don't be a fool. Of course I did not. Then why? London. I shan't tell you that. Perhaps now I've forgotten why I went. Perhaps you never did know me. We've been married how long? Just a year. You never knew anything about what I'd thought, <coughs> felt, or suffered before you knew me. Molly, oh, you're crazy! All right, I'm crazy! Perhaps it's fun to be crazy. <laughs> what the hell are you, Molly? <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> 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 
Now, now, I do hope that you young people are not both saying a little more than you mean. One is so apt into the lover's quarrel. This is no business of yours, Paravachini. Stay out! Did you remove my skis back from the cupboard where you put them? No. Certainly not, Sergeant. Well, somebody has taken them. What made you happen to look for them? The snow is still lying, and I need help here. Reinforcement. I was going to ski back to the police station at Market Hampton and report on the situation. Mr. Wren. Mr. Wren. Did you take my seat? No, I didn't, Sergeant. Miss Casper, did you take my ski? Good Lord, no. Why should I? Could it be? Major Metcalf, did you take them? I didn't touch them. Such a happy little tune. Don't you think? Stop <laughs> frightening my wife at once, Paravachini. <laughs> it's silly of me, but you see, I can't forget it. Her face was all purple. I know. It is difficult to forget <coughs> things. Let's but go to the kitchen. You aren't really the forgetting kind. Are you all right? Yes. <clears throat> Where were you going when you had the accident? Oh, I was on my way to see my friend. In this neighborhood? Not so very far from here. And where were you coming from last night? That is simple. From London. What address in London? I always stay at Carlton Hotel. What is your permanent address? I dislike 
permanency. Your job, your <coughs> profession? I play the market. Stop through. No, no. You misunderstand me, Sergeant. <coughs> Enjoying this little game, aren't you? <coughs> so sure of yourself, too. Well, I shouldn't be too sure. <coughs> you are mixed up in a murder case, and don't you forget it! Not even this murder. Now, can I go? For the moment, yes. <laughs> Just a moment. Were you speaking to me? Yes. Please sit down. Well, what do you want? You must have heard me questioning Mr. Parachini. I did. I would like some information from you as well. What do you want to know? Leslie, Margaret, Catherine, Casewell. Catherine. I spell it with a K. Quite so. Address? Villa Barraposa, <coughs> Pine Dior, Mallorca. That's in Italy? It's an island. A Spanish island. I see. And your address in England? Care of Morgan's Bank, Leadenhall Street. No other address in England? No. And how long has it been since you arrived? A week. And you have been staying since your arrival? At the Ledbury Hotel, Knightsbridge. What brought you here? You found smell manner. I wanted somewhere quiet. In the country. Until I have finished what I came here to do. And what was that? And what was that? Huh. What was it that you came here to do? I, I beg your pardon. I was thinking of something else. You still haven't answered my question, Miss Casewell. I really don't see, you know, why I should. It's a matter that concerns me alone. A strictly private affair. All the same. No, I don't think we'll argue on it. Would you mind telling me your age? Not in the least. I'm 24. 24. You were thinking I look older. That is quite true. And were you born abroad? No. I left England when I was 13. You know, <coughs> I can't quite understand you. Does it matter? Doesn't it? What are you doing here? What are you trying to prove? I'm trying to find out what your name was when you left England. I, it's a long time ago. I've forgotten. Hmm. And what is your real name? I told you. Leslie, Margaret, Catherine... Caswell. Catherine, what the hell are you doing here? Oh God, I wish to God I'd never come here. I always <gasps> thought that the police weren't allowed to give people the third degree. I was merely interrogating Miss Caswell. You seem to have upset her. What did he do? No, it's nothing. It's just... All, all this murder, it's so horrible. Dear me. It came over me suddenly. I'll go up to my room. You look as though you've seen a ghost. I've seen something. I ought to have seen before. Blind as a bat I've been. But now I think we can get somewhere. The police have a clue. Yes, Mr. Ralston, at last. The police has a clue. Mr. Wren. 
I would like everyone gathered to. Mr. Ralston, Mrs. Ralston, Major Metcalf, everyone. Please sit down. Must I come now? It's very inconvenient. There are things more important than me, Mr. Ralston. Mrs. Boyle, for instance, won't want another meal. That's a very darkness way of putting things, Sergeant. I'm sorry, sir. But I need cooperation, and I intend to get it. Mr. Ralston, will you go upstairs and get Miss Casement? Do tell her it will only be for a few minutes. Have your skis been found, Sergeant? No, Mr. Ralston. But I have a very shrewd suspicion of who took them and of why they were taken. But I shan't say anything at the moment. One finger, sir. Mrs. Ralston was in the kitchen. Yes, I was. Major Metcalf. I don't know what he was up to, but he was in the basement. Correct. Mr. Red was up in his room. Yes, I was brushing my hair. And Miss Casewell was writing letters. Yes, I was in the library. And what do you expect to learn from that? You must forgive me if I don't make that clear just now. Now, please pay attention. The same actions will be performed, but not necessarily by the same people. I don't see the point here, Sergeant. There is a point. As I told you, it is a means of checking your state. Now, I will assign you your new station. Mr. Ralston, I'll tell you later. Miss Casement, you go to the basement. Very well. Mr. Red, why don't you go up to the kitchen and keep an eye on Mrs. Ralston's dinner for her? But I can't see. I simply can't see what you can possibly find out by making people do the things they did before. I think it's nonsense. Do you, Mr. Red? Go to the kitchen. Very well, then. What are you going to do, Sergeant Trotter? I will be enacting the part of Mrs. Boyd. Taking a bit of risk. 
Aren't you? Now everyone will stay just where they are. Mrs. Ralston! <coughs> Mrs. Ralston! Yes, what is it? You're looking very pleased with yourself. Have you got what you wanted? Yes, I've got what I wanted. You know who the murderer is? Yes. Which of them? You ought to know. I? You have been extraordinarily foolish holding out on me. And as a result, you have put yourself in danger more than once. I don't understand what you mean. that you had first-hand knowledge of the Longridge farm affair. You knew Mrs. Boyle was the magistrate concerned. You knew everything. Then why did you not speak up and say so? I don't understand. I wanted to forget, forget. Is your maiden name Mr. Perry? Ralston. Yes, Mrs. Miss Perry. Did you teach at the school Someone where those three orphans were sent? Yes. See, is it true? Bahar. That the boy Jimmy, who died, he managed to get a letter posted to him. And in it, he begged for help. He begged and begged and begged for help from his kind young teacher. You didn't do anything. I couldn't, I never got it. No, you just didn't bother. That's not true. I was ill. I went down with pneumonia, that very day itself, and the letter was put aside with the others. It was weeks afterwards that I got hold of that letter, and by then, that child was dead, dead, waiting for me to do something, gradually losing hope. Oh, it's monstrous. <coughs> Such things should happen. <laughs> I thought the police did not carry revolvers. The police doesn't carry revolvers. But I am not a policeman. <laughs> Policeman? Yes. <coughs> Just because I rang up from the call box and said that I was speaking from the police headquarters and that a sergeant trotter was on his way. <laughs> you know what I did? What? I cut the telephone wire. <laughs> Before I came to the front door, you know who I am? I'm Jimmy, his older brother. I'm Georgie. I'm one of the three children at Longridge Farm. I want to talk to you. I said I want to talk to you. You don't scream, or else I'll shoot you. Jimmy died. That cruel, nasty Mrs. Leon. She killed Jimmy. They put her in prison.
and I did kill her. In the fall. <laughs> you killed her. And I hope Jimmy knows. After that, I killed that old hag, Mrs. Boyd. She sent us there. Boy. And now, I'll kill you in a minute. You would better not. You'll never get away safely. My skis are gone, and I can't find them. But I don't care. It was so much fun watching you all and acting like a policeman. Now you die. That revolver will make a lot of noise. Perhaps it will. So I'll just take you the usual way. I tell you. Last little mouse <laughs> is finally in the trap. Georgie! Georgie! No! Georgie! George! Georgie, no! You, you, you know me, don't you? Don't you remember the farm, Georgie? The, the dogs? Yes! Cotton plane. Kathy. Yes, Kathy, it's me. You, you, you remember me now, don't you? Kathy. What are you doing here? I came to England to find you. I didn't recognize you until you twirled your hair. The like, way you. Like this? Yes, yes. You always did it, Georgie. Come with me. Georgie, you are coming with me. Where are we going? Somewhere where you will be safe. But the last little mouse, I have to kill her. No, Georgie, no! Georgie? Get out! No, Georgie, come with me! You have to come with me! The last! Georgie! Molly? Molly? Are you all right, Molly? Giles! Giles! Are you all right? <laughs> Whoever would have dreamt it was Trotter. He's mad, quite mad. Yes, but you. I was mixed up in all of this. <coughs> I taught in the school, you see. But it wasn't my fault. You should have told me, sweetheart. I wanted to forget. Everything's under control now. Trotter, I mean Georgie, will be fine. Miss Casewell, his sister, is looking after him. Poor fellow's mad. I had my doubt all along. Did you? Didn't you believe he was a policeman? I knew he wasn't a policeman. <coughs> you see, Mrs. Ralston. I am a policeman. You? Yes, Molly. He isn't Major Metcalf. He's Inspector Metcalf. He just told me about this right now. As soon as the police got hold of that notebook, they sent Major Inspector Metcalf in disguise. And Trotter, I mean Georgie, how does he know Miss Casewell? Miss Casewell is Trotter's, I mean Georgie's sister. She just recognized him while he was twirling his hair but didn't know what to do. But thankfully, she informed Inspector Metcalf, and that's how you got saved, Molly. And I thought it was Paravaccini all along. Didn't we all? Paravaccini is very weird. But one moment. The mystery still isn't over. Giles, what were you doing 
in London yesterday. I was in London yesterday. To get you our anniversary present, you fool. Oh. We've been married just a year today. That's what I went to London for. And I didn't want you to know. Where is it? There's cigars. I do hope they're all right. Oh, darling, how sweet of you. That's splendid. Where's my present? Oh. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, it's a hat. A hat? How lovely. <laughs> now, finally, finally, everything's okay in Monkswell Manor now. Finally. finally. Help! Help! Mr. Ralston! Mrs. Ralston! What now? Someone is burning in the kitchen. <gasps> Someone is burning in the kitchen! Whoopsie! Pardon me, pardon me. Something is burning in the kitchen. Oh, oh my king! <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we hope, we hope you're enjoying the evening. The show will resume in about 20 minutes. Let's take a short tea break to refresh ourselves. You are requested to be seated back by 7.35. So, feel free to stretch your legs, grab a cup of tea, and get ready for the next exciting part of our show. Thank you. Hold, hold, hold. Check. Check. Check.
ভালো হ্যালো 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 টেস্ট হ্যালো টেস্ট
हॉल सर स्टेज लाइट्स डन सर सर सारे माइक्स का लेवल दे दो कॉर्डलेस सेवेंटीन एटीन नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी सब फ्लिकर्स ऑफ करो प्लीज हेलो हेलो हाँ जी हाँ जी सर सब फ्लिकलिंग बंद कर दो यस सर हेलो 
चेक हेलो माइक चेक सर ट्वेंटी थ्री का लेवल दे चैनल नंबर ट्वेंटी थ्री Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. Flickering. Sorry. Flickering sir. Yes sir. Blackout. Sir, stage light.
थोड़ी थोड़ी सी आवाज आएगी तो सहज का लेवल डांसर आर एम आर डांसर Yeah. 
Hold, 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 check. Hold on, mic, check, one, two. Check, check. Hello, sound check. Check.
Hello. 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 Hello.
तेरे नाम तेरे नाम तेरे नाम तेरे दो दातू तके आए होया बुरा हाल वे जदो दातू तके आए होया बुरा हाल वे दिल मेरा चौंदा हूं रवा तेरे नाल वे दिल मेरा चौंदा हूं रवा तेरे नाल वे दिल नु दिल दिया लगी जान मारया दिल नु सानू जन माइया तेरी ठगिया ने मारिया 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 जवाब कद कर दे सवाल ने तेरे नैणा दिया खेडा एक माल ने दिंद ने जवाब कद कर दे सवाल ने दुनिया तो अक गया तेरे लड़ लग गया दुनिया तो अक गया तेरे लड़ लग गया हर वेले रहना चना तेरा ही चन माइया तेरी ठगिया ने मारिया सानू चन माइया तेरी ठगिया ने मारिया सानू चन माइया तेरी ठगिया ने मारिया सानू चन माइया तेरी ठगिया ने मारिया
musical excellence is all about. We are honored to have had the opportunity to witness their brilliance. The stage was not just a platform. It was a battleground where passion clashed with strength, and the result was nothing short of euphoric. Hello. 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 Hi. Hello. 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 
हेलो 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 हेलो
these incredible young ladies just took us on a musical journey to the heart and soul of India. Their performance was nothing short of magical. Combining grace, energy and emotion in perfect harmony. Moving on, the imperial combination of the flute and tabla awaits all of us, prompting a fusion of melodic grace and rhythmic prowess. Together, they will paint the North Tree masterpiece that transcends time and invites you to experience the true essence of musical synergy. Without further ado, let's enjoy the mesmerizing performance of Raj Bhopali unfold before us. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Raj Bhopali. नमस्कार आज हम आपके सामने राग भोपाली की प्रस्तुति देने जा रहे हैं यह एक कल्याण थाट का राग है जिसमें माँ और नीस्वर वर्जित हैं। अर्थात इस राग को गाते बजाते हुए माँ और नीस्वर का उपयोग नहीं किया जाता आपकी अनुमति से हम इस राग को शुरू करते हैं
In this harmonious marriage of wind and profusion, the outro serves as a poetic farewell, inviting reflection on the intricate tapestry of sounds woven throughout the performance. Indeed, it created a profound musical experience. Audience, please get ready to rock as we now transport you back in time to the legendary era of classic rock. Tonight, we proudly present a performance that will ignite your senses and take you on a musical journey like no other. Please put your hands together and give a warm welcome to the talented musicians who are about to take you on a journey through the timely sounds of smoke on the water. <laughs>
forced by the stale flutists have not only ignited our spirits but have also created an atmosphere of pure joy and energy. Moving on, the next song is not just a melody. It's an experience that delves into the depths of love, heartache, and the tremendous journey. So let the music feel its magic and transport you to a world where every note tells a story and every beat echoes the rhythm of the human soul. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's give a warm welcome to our band as they bring to life the intense beauty of Swirvanga. Check one, two, one, one. Hello, check, hello, check. Check. Hello, hello. Hello, check. Hello, check. What's up everyone? I hope you are doing good. So get ready to unleash the sonic boom. Introducing you to the defaulters. So on keys we have Navyaj. On lead guitar we have Sahaj. Make some noise! On rhythm guitar we have Aryan. On bass guitar we have Param. On drums we have Satwik. Make some noise! I'm Ishan. And I'm Rehan. So now we are going to sing Kurban Hua by Salim Suleiman. So here we go.
kurba hua teri tashnagi mein yo kurba hua teri aashiqi mein yo bekhudi mein bekali mein bekasi mein hua tujhko har dua di aur daga bhi aur fana hua Well, moving on, 
Our next act is going to take you on a journey through the heart of Punjab with a mesmerizing rendition of the Punjabi song Madania and Nejana. This song is not just about music. It's a celebration of love, culture and tradition. So get ready to be enchanted by the rich melodies and heartfelt lyrics of this Punjabi classic as our talented performers bring it to life like never before. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Madania and Naijana. Hello, hi chick, hi chick. Hold, hold, hold. Hello, hello, hi chick. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, my chick. Hello. 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 Hello.
वॉट इज कैप्टिवेटिंग एंड सोलफुल परफॉर्मेंस We now have a sensational fusion of two iconic songs that will ignite the stage with their passion and intensity. Our talented band is all set to present Sayoni and Bulia in a way you've never heard before. As we delve into the world of music tonight, let the soulful tunes of Sayoni touch your hearts and allow the enchanting aura of Bulia. to transport you to a realm of spiritual bliss let's give a thunderous applause to our band as they prepare to unleash their creativity and passion with this unforgettable fusion of sayuni and bulia हॉल हॉल चेक हेलो चेक हेलो चेक हेलो चेक हेलो चेक हेलो चेक हेलो चेक चेक वन टू हॉल 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 चेक वन टू Check one two.
Sayoni Sayoni Chene kupal nahi Chene kupal nahi Chene kupal nahi Or koi hal nahi Sayoni Sayoni कपल नहीं चैने कपल नहीं चैने कपल नहीं और कोई हल नहीं सयोरी सयोरी बशर की बिसार क्या बशर की बिसार क्या बशर की बिसार ताज है कल नहीं चैने कपल नहीं चैने कपल नहीं चैने कपल नहीं और कोई हल नहीं Sayoni, Sayoni. मेरी रूह का परिंदा फड़फड़ाए लेकिन सकून का जजीरा मिल न पाए बेकी करा बेकी करा एक बार तो तजली तो दिला दे झूठी सही मगर तसली तो दिला दे बेकी करा बेकी करा राजन दे यार बुलिया सुन ले पुकार बुलिया तू ही तो यार बुलिया मुर्शिद मेरा मुर्शिद मेरा तेरा मुकाम कमले सरहद के पार बुलिया परवदिगार बुलिया आफिस तेरा मुर्शिद मेरा राजन दे यार बुलिया सुन ले पुकार बुलिया तू ही तो यार बुलिया मुर्शिद मेरा मुर्शिद मेरा तेरा मुकाम कमले सरहद के पार बुलिया परवदिगार बुलिया आफिस तेरा मुर्शिद मेरा एक पल को ठहरू पल में उड़ जाऊं मैं ताऊं पग डंडी लब दी ए जरा जन्नत दी तू बुड़े जहा मैं साथ मुड़ जाऊं तेरे कार बा में शामिल होना चाहूं कमियां तराश के मैं काबिल होना चाहूं 
बेकी करा बेकी करा राजन ने यार बुलिया सुन ले पुकार बुलिया तू ही तो यार बुलिया मुर्शिद मेरा मुर्शिद मेरा तेरा मुकाम कमले सरहद के पार बुलिया परवतगार बुलिया आफिस तेरा मुर्शिद मेरा राजन ने यार बुलिया सुन ले पुकार बुलिया तू ही तो यार बुलिया मुर्शिद मेरा मुर्शिद मेरा तेरा मुकाम कमले सरहद के पार बुलिया परवतगार बुलिया आफिस तेरा मुर्शिद मेरा
Hello, 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 hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello.
absolutely captivating and mesmerizing flute performance with just rhythm. The way the artist skillfully brought out the essence of Dilhe Chotasa and Rata Lamia to the flute is truly commendable. Moving further, the student band presents before you a zestful performance of the immigrant song. The band is set to deliver a performance that's not just music, but a vibrant celebration of passion and enthusiasm. Let's get ready to witness the immigrant song. Hello. Hello, my trick. Sound trick. Hello. 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 My trick. Hello. 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 My trick. Sound trick. Hello. 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 My trick. Sound trick. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. 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 Hello.
हेलो 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 हेलो
Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello, my check,
the members of the management, our director principal, Mr. A. B. S. Sidhu, and our worthy principal, Mr. Rita Sharma, for being our pillars of strength. Without your support, this event wouldn't have been possible. We also dearly thank the two talented musicians behind the core program, Vineet Sir and Gurpreet Sir. Also, a word of appreciation for all the amazing performers tonight. Our heartfelt thanks to the staff of Sopez and Tagore who aided this event. And to our dear Ross fantastic audience, we extend our heartfelt gratitude for making tonight's show an extraordinary success. Moving to the last performance of the night, we are now here to deliver a high octane performance that will have you dancing, singing, and rocking to the beat all night long. So let's make some noise and get ready for an unforgettable musical journey. Please put your hands together for Rodas Blues. Hello, 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 hello,
Without further ado, let's give a warm and enthusiastic welcome to our band as they prepare to fill the air with the irresistible sounds of Jubilee. Hold it. Check one, two, two, two. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Check, check, hold it, check, check. Hold it, hold it, check, check. Hold it, check one, two, two. Hello, check, hello, check, check. Hold it, hold it, check, check. Hello, check, check. Hold it, check one, two, two. Hello, check, hello, check, check, We need sir stage speakers at 18 number level. Sir stage speakers. Check, check, check. Hello, check. One, two, check, check, check. Hello, check. Ever the body of the Jukiti, 
time this entire show, the school has declared a holiday for tomorrow. Well, that was a natural applause.